This is Neil Schneider for MTBS TV at CES 2013. I'm in DDD's private suite, and we always look forward to visiting DDD because they always have cool things to show us each year. Now, to my immediate left is Chris Udall, CEO of DDD. Welcome, DDD being Dynamic Digital Depth. Welcome to the program, Chris. Thanks very much indeed, Neil. It's nice to be here. Now, first, I wish to congratulate you because the last year was a big milestone for DDD, and, and, and I mean that financially. Can you elaborate a little more for us? Well, yes, contrary to what uh, you're reading in the press, 3D actually is a market that grew quite significantly in 2012, and DDD's customers have now shipped over 23 million products with the TriDev technology up until the end of September. Um, that's allowed us in, uh, to, to deliver a profit for the first time in our company's history for the first six months of last year. And as the business continued to grow in, in the second half of the year, we've, we've had a banner year. We're expecting to see something in the region of 60 to 70 percent growth over what we achieved in 2011. Excellent, excellent. Now, at CES, of course, it's it's the show of announcements, and uh, I understand you you've made a recent announcement with Samsung and LG. Can you? I mean, we've we've got a some a Samsung TV here. What's so special about this unit? Well, last <clears throat> excuse me, last year, in in response to the the lack of 3D content, uh, in February we rolled out our Yabazam. Uh, streaming video application onto LG's TVs. We followed that up in June with the rollout on Samsung's TVs. And then later in the year, uh, we gave people the, the ability to buy the movies. We've got 70 to 80 3D movies now from various different content creators under license. Um, we initially rolled out a video on demand service, so if you liked the movie trailer, you could buy the movie and watch it for as many times as you wanted in the next 24 hours. Very late uh, in December, we rolled out a subscription service. So this is similar to Netflix for 3D movies. Uh, what this allows you to do is on LG's TVs right now here in America, pay $9.99 a month and that gets you any of the movies on Yabazam that you want to watch and as many of the movies that you want to watch and you can do the same on Samsung. Uh, most recently this week we just announced that in addition to the six countries that Yabazam was already available on for Smart TV uh, it's now available in another seven countries in Europe, Netherlands, uh, Australia, New Zealand, even South America, Brazil, which is uh, uh, surprisingly uh, showing some good strong uh, consumption of the movies that we've got on Yabazam now. So just to underscore, I mean, w w one of the big trends this year, and actually it was a bit of a trend last year as well, were, were smart TVs, where the t it's not just the television anymore, they actually have this, their own operating system and applets and, and apps and so on. So when we're talking about Yabazam, is it, is it like an, an applet or an application on the television? Can you describe it a little more? Well, the goal that we set out uh, with Yabazam is to create a, what we call 3D Everywhere. Uh, we launched it originally on the PCs. Uh, many of our TriDev customers with our game drivers have the ability to, to stream movies to their PCs because it's, it's part of what we deliver there. Uh, the smart TV is obviously important because people want to get video type television content on their televisions and smart TV has been a very important enabler for that. And then more recently, obviously, we just announced our Android Yabazam app, so we can also stream to the emerging range of glasses-free tablets and mobile phones that are starting to come into the market. So you'll see some of those on the show floor here at CES. Okay, excellent. Now, you're, in your hands is not just any tablet. Can you, can you describe what, what you're holding for us? Maybe hold it up to the camera. Yeah, this is the new uh, Jadme uh, 3D tablet. This is a glasses-free 3D tablet from Jadme, a Chinese uh, uh, electronics manufacturer. uses the Android operating system, and uh, on their booth here at the show floor, you'll see uh, video conversion. I think they've got the Psy Gangnam-style uh, video that uh, they're showing in 3D, courtesy of TriDef's Android application. And we also have the game driver capability where we can take very popular uh, OpenGL games like Angry Birds and Fruit Ninja, play those in 3D on these tablets even though they're not specially made that way. And the other thing that we can do is obviously take the Yabazam content from our content portal and stream that to these uh, new emerging uh, 3D glasses tablets as well. Now, uh, when we're talking about an OpenGL driver, maybe you could elaborate a little bit more as to, to what you mean by that, because that's actually a very, very exciting development. Well, obviously, we started in the PC marketplace with a driver that intercepts the DirectX information that's coming from the game, and that allows us to 
uh, restructure the graphics pipeline and turn it into stereo 3D. We can do that for about 730 games now in, in the PC marketplace. OpenGL is a, a slightly different uh, challenge for us technically and we spent a good part of last year looking at how we could uh, add functions into OpenGL to allow us to implement the same game interception and re-rendering technology uh, that we delivered for the PC marketplace. So what we do is we actually add a couple of extra lines of code to the OpenGL library that sits on the tablet or the mobile phone and that then allows us to take advantage of the same um, interception and rendering logic that we've applied in the PC marketplace to allow us to convert the OpenGL. They're simpler games, the rules are slightly different, but the 3D visual experience is, is still as compelling as you get on the PC. Now, in, in the PC world, through your Tridef Ignition drivers, um, you could you know, there's a generic profile. So whatever game you get on the store shelf, in many cases, you could run it right, you know, right out. Um, in other cases, you need to have some customizations to a profile to compensate for, you know, little anomalies and stuff that need to be fixed along the way. Um, in the case of mobile, is there a preset number of games that will work, or is there also a generic profile that you could, you, you could use with everything in, in, in the market? Well, today what we've done is we've rolled out a preset number of profiles because we want, uh, as we saw in the PC marketplace when we launched that back in 2008, 2000, 2009, we want to try and deliver the best experience for these early adopters. Um, there's no reason why we can't have a generic profile, but we haven't released that yet and I think what we'll do is build a series of profiles. The games themselves have far uh, simpler graphics pipelines. Uh, they're much more layered in their structure than say something in the PC environment. So. Um, there are some different challenges that we've got, but today we've got about 20 different games that we can already play uh, that are drawn from the popular games in China and Europe and North America that people are playing on their tablets and mobile devices. Now this is, it just reminded me, th th this is one tablet, um, and we have photographs of another tablet as well. Can you give us some details on that unit? Yeah, we've been involved um, over the last uh, several months as we've been developing these mobile technologies with a number of customers, primarily in Asia, uh, China, Singapore, uh, Korea, who are prototyping and developing 3D products. Some of them y you now see here at the Consumer Electronics Show. Um, the uh, tablet product that, that we looked at earlier was uh, one that was actually shown, I think, at a trade show in Europe uh, a few months ago at the end of 2012. Um, and we do expect to see these products coming into the market this year. Um, this particular one from 3D Nuri, uh, they're showing on the show floor. They've got various uh, manifestations of it. Um, and we, we do expect that 3D mobile devices, which give you the experience without the glasses, will be something that we see coming into the market during 2013. And I think it'll be a good solid growth market for 3D for the next uh, several years. Excellent. Now, um, I'm not certain if you brought this up. Um, I, I mean, we've talked a little bit about DDD's revenue and that you, you know, congratulations, you've achieved profitability within the last year. Uh, how many units of DDD products would you estimate have been sold uh, over the company's history? Well, we know that up until the end of September, based on the royalty reports that we'd received from our customers, that over 23 million products, that's PCs, television, Blu-ray players, mobile phones, have been shipped using Tridef technologies for game and video and photo conversion. Um, I would expect that we're certainly north of probably 26, 27 million units now, but we, we won't know that until late uh, January, early February when our existing licensees give us their royalty reports for what they shipped in the last three months of 2012. But certainly, uh, you know, if you go back to uh, CES at uh, early 2010 when televisions first arrived, we probably shipped about 100,000 units of our technology and to go from 100,000 to 25 million plus in three years is you know, certainly a, a dream realized for our team who've been working so hard on this. Excellent. Well, sounds like exciting times are ahead. Thank you so much for joining us. We've been speaking with Chris Udall, CEO of Dynamic Digital Depth. This is Neil Schneider for MTBS TV at CES 2013. We will, of course, be back with more. Thank you for watching.